So in this video, I will prove an exactness theorem for Hilbert spaces. So this lecture is attached to the previous video that I uploaded on uh, the definition of the adjoint of a densely defined operator in a Hilbert space. And I also showed in that video, uh, this result, the related result of uh, von Neumann. All right, so let me give you the general setup here. So H1, H2, H3, so these are three Hilbert spaces. And I have the following diagram. Yeah. So T is a densely defined closed operator between H1 and H2, and S is a densely defined operator between H2 and H3. So, so T One Dom T is dense in H two. S from Dom S three. Dom S is dense in H three uh, in H two. So T S densely defined plus closed. So I defined these notions in the, in the previous video, and then we did lots of interesting things there. Okay, so. Here, I'm assuming that the composition in this diagram is of the following kind. So the composition of S and T is zero. So what this really means, right? We have to be slightly careful here because uh, everything is densely defined. This is what, what it means. So wherever T is defined, it takes its domain into the kernel of S. All right, so the, the, the question that we will try to answer is, so when, under what circumstance, under what conditions, do I actually have equality here? So. Okay, and the motivating uh, example to be kept in mind, this was also something I uh, introduced in detail in the previous lecture, right? So for us, H1 will often be L2 PQ forms on a vector bundle V. This is a vector bundle. X is a compact Kähler, right? H2 will be PQ plus one forms in V with L2 coefficients and L3, H3 will be LPQ, LPQ plus two forms in V with L2 coefficients. And then T will be del bar going out of H1, so PQ, and S will be del bar out of, going out of PQ plus one. All right, so as we, as I uh, showed you last time, so these are densely defined plus closed. All right, so we want to know, so if, if, if you place this example into uh, the context of this question, right? So we want to know right? So when our L bar closed forms yep. question mark, question mark, question mark. Well, not always. So you always need some conditions. And then the, the result I will show today will give us an abstract theorem whose conditions, if you verify, then this uh, question is answered uh, affirmatively. So pretty much always if that condition is, is satisfied. Okay, good. So let me start with a preliminary theorem that, that says the following. So in the above setting, we have the following. have 
following. Okay, so you can write H2 as the orthogonal sum of kernel of S intersected with kernel of T star. This is the von Neumann adjoint of T plus the closure of the image plus the closure of the image of S star. Moreover, so kernel of S can be written as the orthogonal sum of kernel of S with kernel of T star plus image closure. All right, so let's give a quick proof of this. So this will be an application of von Neumann's theorem from the previous lecture, a bit of functional analysis. Okay, so, so we know that S is closed. So this implies that kernel of S is a closed subspace of H2, right? So being closed means that the graph is closed. You intersect uh, the graph with a certain hyperplane, you get kernel of S inside H2 needs to be closed. Okay, so if you have a closed subspace of a Hilbert space, then you can write the Hilbert space as an orthogonal decomposition. Right now, by von Neumann's theorem, so von Neumann, right, we know that this equals image of S star closure. Right, so all in all, I can write kernel of S plus image of S star. Okay, so, however, I also know another closed subspace of H2, right? So similarly, right? So T star, the von Neumann adjoint, right? Goes from H2 to H1. It's also densely defined plus closed. Okay, so this means play the same game. This is kernel of T star plus an image of T. So it's really T star star closure. But as we know from this theorem of von Neumann, T star star is just T. So I can just erase the two stars here to get this. Now, so S composed T is nothing, right? So in particular, this space here is contained in kernel of S. All right, so what does that mean? That means that if I intersect this orthogonal decomposition with kernel of S, then I get the following. So I get kernel of S here, kernel of T star intersected with kernel of S, orthogonal sum of image of T closure intersected with kernel of S, right? But here comes the trick, right? So since image of T is containing kernel of S, then this intersection really does nothing. So you can just get rid of the kernel of S part. Now just compare this with one of the identities that was meant to be proved, right? So it's up here, right? So it's the same. So we, we just proved this one. Now the other one, the other one, look what's going on for the other one. For the other one, just take this identity and put it together with this, this identity. See, here you see kernel of S appearing. So instead of kernel of S, plug in this identity here, and then you will get exactly uh, the decomposition for H2. So let me just uh, say, let me call this one, let me call this two, and let me call this three. So then I'll just say one plus two implies we're done. Okay, so now comes the main theorem. So, so far we didn't impose anything special on T and S, 
So let me let me do that now. So this is sort of the exactness theorem that the title advertised. So it says the following. So if under the conditions imposed above, you have the following estimate. So if you have this somewhat artificial looking estimate, but once I'll show you the Bachner formula in the next lecture, you'll agree with me that this is actually quite natural. So if you have this estimate, let me write it down first in a few words. So for all x in domain of t star intersect domain of s, right? So if for some c positive, we have this estimate for all x in domain of t star and domain of s, then here's the conclusion. So you get that for all v, in kernel of S, there exists a U in domain of T such that T is equal to EU. Okay, so what, what this is really what we want. So what, what this says, so what this says is the same as saying kernel of S is the same as image of T. Okay, but there's more, and then the, the more part is important. So this U satisfies an additional estimate. So the Hilbert space norm of U is going to be less than one over C times V Hilbert space norm squared, where this C here is the same as this C. So, it's okay if you find this extra thing here a bit mysterious and it's not clear how this will be useful, but I'll hope to show you in, even in the next lecture that in case of the Del Bar problem, you get lots of extra mileage out of, out of this condition. Okay, so let, let's, uh, let's uh, wrap up this lecture by, by showing this uh, theorem. So, so we, we start with a few remarks. So let me call this estimate uh, double star. So it's immediate to see that double star implies that kernel of S intersected with kernel of T star is just the original. Well, why is that? Well, pick an element here from this intersection and plug it, plug it in here. You get zero here, zero there. So that implies that your starting vector had to be zero, zero as well. Okay, so what this means, what this means is that uh, if we go back to the decomposition of previous theorem, let me go back there. So just keep this in mind. Kernel of S intersected kernel of T star is nothing. So if I go here, all right, this was one of the decompositions obtained. This part will be nothing. So that means that kernel of S is image of T closure. So not quite what we want. We'd rather get rid of this, this closure part here, but I would call this a bit of a progress. Okay, so instead, right, let's take the perp of both sides. So then you get kernel of S perp is the same as image of T closure perp. Okay, now von Neumann tells you that this is actually kernel of T star. So keep this in mind. Keep in mind that kernel of S perp is ker kernel of T star. Okay, so now let's, let's uh, focus here. Let's try to show, show this uh, exactness property. So let's pick a V in a kernel of S, and I want to show that there exists a U for which this exactness property is, uh, is satisfied. Okay, so a bit of analysis will be needed. So let's pick, in, in addition to this V, an X from domain of T star. 
right? So again, just to recall, domain of T star is a dense subspace of H2. Okay, so as such, H2 has all sorts of orthogonal decomposition. In particular, you can write this X as X prime plus X double prime, where the X prime is from kernel of S and the X double prime is from kernel of S perp. Okay, so I'm immediately pointing out using this identity that I got that kernel of S perp is nothing but kernel of T star. We'll use this in a minute. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, construct a weird looking map. So bear with me. So I will construct a map from image of T star. So I'm picking a point here, for example, T star X, right? Since X was in domain of T star, this is possible. So I'm saying there's a map that takes this ve vector to XV. And this inner product is with respect to H2. Right? And this is a complex number, obviously. Okay, so the question is, so is this map well-defined? So question mark, well-defined, right? So obviously, you know, the, the, an obvious problem that could arise, right? So if, if you take uh, two vectors from image of T star, there might be two different X's that give the same image, right? So in particular, this expression here might not give a map. You might get two different expressions there as well. But what you will see is that the answer is yes here because B is orthogonal to kernel of star, right? Why? Well, V was from kernel of S, right? And then as you see up here, right? So kernel of S is orthogonal to kernel of T star. So, so in particular, this is indeed well-defined. So I can exchange this question mark to a exclamation mark. Okay, so we have this weird map. And again, if you're wondering again, so image of T star, one needs to always be a little bit careful here because of the densely defined adjective to each of these operators. So the image of T star is just T of dom T star. Okay, good. So let's do a bit of analysis here. Let's, I'll call this map phi. So it makes sense for me to say phi of T star X is nothing but X inner product V. So let me do a bit of analysis. So I'm using this uh, decomposition up here. So I'm plugging X prime plus X double prime V. Now V is from kernel of uh, S and then as I already pointed out a number of time, X double prime is from kernel of S perp. So this is X prime V. So now you use Cauchy-Schwarz here. So then you get X prime norm. <coughs> Okay, so now I, so X prime I'm claiming So I'm claiming that I can continue the following manner. So I'll write it first and then I'll explain later. Okay, so how did this come about? How did that come about? Well, X prime I'm claiming is from domain of T star intersected with domain of S. Okay, so let's go back to the definition. So X, yeah, so X prime here was by definition taken from kernel of S. So in particular, it's in domain of S, that, that's easy. Now, why is it in domain of T star? Well. Recall X double prime, right, was from kernel of S perp, right, which is nothing but the kernel of T star, right, again, up here. So in particular, X double prime was from the domain of T star, 
okay? But so is X by definition, but from the beginning, X was from domain of T star. So in particular, these two imply that X prime, which is just X minus X double prime, also has to be in domain of T star. Since domain of T star is a linear subspace, might not be closed, often it isn't, but it's always a linear subspace. Okay, so X prime is from this intersection. So that means I can apply the estimate, right? So it was double star. Right, so estimate double star said that there's a C here, right? Um, what is it? There was a, Okay, now X prime, uh, let me think for a second. Right, so X prime was from kernel of S, right? So this is, this part is just zero. So you can just continue on here and get this. So this is how, see, this is how I got this identity here. Okay, so I'm claiming that actually you can go one more step here, all this equals, V times one over C times star X. Again, why? Well, T star of X double prime is zero, right? So this is, a, I'm using this probably the third time already, right? It's, uh, it's right here. So X double prime is in the kernel of T star. So we have this identity. We have this identity. Uh, sorry, we have this estimate that I got. Let me just write it down one more time. So, phi t star x is less than v over c times uh, norm of t star x. So what, this, what does this mean? So if you recall your knowledge from basic functional analysis, this means that phi, right, as an operator from dom t star to c, as a functional, better said, is actually continuous. Right. Continuous, moreover, its norm, whatever it is, has to be less than V over C. Okay, so now comes Han Banach. So this means that Han Banach tells you that phi actually extends to the whole space H2, right? So I'll just Right, that you, now we have, I mean, there's, there's infinitely many ways to do this, but there's definitely going to be a continuous extension such that its norm is going to be bound by the same bound as the restriction. Okay, but H2 is a Hilbert space. So now we can use the Ries representation theorem To say that actually phi is induced by a vector in H2, right? So there exists a U in H2. <coughs> uh, sorry, no, no, no. There's, there's a important typo here, right? So domain of T star, right? this is a subspace of H1. So the extension here of phi is not to H2, but to H1. Okay, so there exists a U in H1 such that phi of Y is equal to Y of U, right? So for all Y in uh, H1. Okay, 
But we know something special about phi when I restrict the domain of uh, T star, right? So in particular, this implies that y u should equal All right, so the Reese representation tells you that y inner product u is nothing but, uh, maybe I should put x here. So x inner product u is nothing but t star x inner product v, right? Where the inner product here in the first spot is with respect to first Hilbert space and here, uh, Okay, I figured out why I hesitated. I should replace the U here and the V. Right, again, so the, all this is equal to phi of uh, T star X. So it's two different ways of writing the same thing, right? So here I'm using Reese representation and here I'm using the definition, okay? But this should be true for all x in f t star, right? So because of that, we automatically get that u has to be in the domain of t star star, right? Because of the definition of the formal adjoint. So von Neumann adjoint. So u is in the domain of t, moreover, Right? Because of this representation here that we have, this formula, we automatically get that TU has to be equal to V, right? What we wanted to show. Moreover, right, due to the fact that the norm of phi is less than V over C and phi is represented by U, right? So the norm of phi has to be the same as the norm of u. So hence it has to be less than v over c, right? So all the claims of the theorem are proved. Okay, so this sort of wraps up the lecture I intended for today. So next time we will apply this result to solve our del bar problem with L2 estimate following Hermann. All right, thank you for your attention.